All right, back here on the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. I am your host for today's episode. I am the podcast producer here, Casey Callan, joined, of course, as always, by certified sex therapist Mark Goldberg. Today we're talking about body image, penis size, and how all of that impacts sexual performance in the bedroom. One of the most popular articles on our website, ErectionIQ.com, is all about penis size and how it can infiltrate the mind of so many men and really cause issues in the bedroom where there really shouldn't be that kind of issue. So first of all, is it safe to say, Mark, that men tend to put an unjustified amount of importance on this concern? So I think the short answer to that question is yes. I I want to acknowledge the complexity um, of this question, though, and I want to recognize that there are partners of men out there that do... um, have significantly different experiences based on the size of a partner. Um, However, what we do know is that those are a small percentage Mm -hmm. of partners of men. Um, The overwhelming majority of partners um, seem to put less focus and less emphasis on the specific dimensions of the penis or the erection than do men themselves. Okay. Um, so as a generality, the answer is yes, but that is not to take away from each person's individual experience. And in some instances, this could have a uh, profound impact, but that certainly is the exception, not the rule. Gotcha. So let's get this question out of the way because I know it's in the article on ErectionIQ.com that we'll, of course, link to today. But on our website what did you have it as the average size of an erect penis on that article so it's a great question I, I don't remember offhand what it says in the article because um, sometimes the data gets updated mm-hmm. uh, but the average uh, to my knowledge currently is somewhere in the range of 5.1 to 5.2 inches as an erection I don't remember offhand what the current data is around girth, which is another important measure, but men do seem to fixate a lot more on length uh, than girth. Now, I I do want to say that I think the notion of a measurement that gets down to 5.1 inches, 5.2 inches is a little bit silly Mm -hmm. because uh, partners really do not do a very good job of assessing. And I think when we talk about a very specific number um, in a certain sense, I think we, we begin to feed in to the performance anxiety, to the performance anxiety and the worries and concerns around penis size. Yeah. Uh, you know, 5.1, when we talk about that number of 5.2, it's as if to say that like the vaginal canal as an example would be somehow able to measure that and can yeah. really tell the difference between 5.1 and 5.2 and 5.4 or 4.8. It's a little bit silly mm-hmm. from my perspective. And I think what is a better way to think about this is more of like a range of where are you know 95 plus percent of men in the size category? Is it somewhere between, let's say, four and six inches? Are you somewhere in that range, generally yeah. speaking? Uh, because if you are, if the average, let's say, is 5.2 and you're 5.4, uh, do you feel better? And if the, if the average is 5.2 and you're five, but your partner seems to be very satisfied, like, are you missing anything? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's a little bit unhelpful when we talk about like a specific number because it's just an aggregate out of a study True. and they divide by the number of participants, which I think is um, very, very uh, laboratory-like, very yeah. scientific. Uh, but I think that it does some somewhat detract from the overall human experience. So if we're going to talk about numbers, I think talking about a range of where do 95 plus percent of men find themselves and does it really make a significant difference to your partner if you are within that range, I think is a much more valuable question. Yeah, well, having said all that, do you think anxiety about penis size is far more common um, than is justified? Uh, Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, I think that if a man is somewhere within a a range which is we'll call it the like 
within one or two standard deviations Mm -hmm. of a length of a penis and uh, there's no uh, reason a priori to believe that this should have an impact uh, or a significant impact on a partner's experience, um, then this is something that people really shouldn't be worrying about. Now, look, if if a man is with a partner who's insistent on a particular size and it's really genuine and bona fide, I can understand how that is going to lead to some performance anxiety. However, in the vast majority of situations, it is a man being up in his own head, worrying that he isn't good enough for a partner or the reason why a partner isn't um, into it is Mm -hmm. because of something he's not bringing to the table. Um, And generally, uh, size of erection uh, becomes the the target of blame. Gotcha. So let's talk about some common reasons men get concerned about penis size. I mean, if we can get some education around these topics, perhaps, you know, shed some actual facts around them, we can break down some of that mystery and some of that anxiety. So I know on our website in this article, we talk about how concern about penis size can actually cause insecurity, low self-esteem, and then other negative feelings about themselves. So, I mean, I think it's it's true um, that it can certainly cause anxiety and negative feelings about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it should or not, or how much stock a person should put into size of penis is a totally different question. Mm-hmm. I'll say some of the other reasons uh, we have on our website uh, on why men get concerned about penis sizes. They believe that if they were bigger, they could actually be a better sexual partner. Um, another one is they're worried um, how their sexual partner um, responds to having sex with them. And then the other one is you worry that your size is the reason that your partner does not orgasm. I know that those are three kind of common issues of why men get concerned about penis size. What would you say to any of those? Um, so, again, these, these concerns are common. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of this, I think, stems from misinformation. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea that the size of the penis is somehow going to determine how a partner responds. Yeah. And I want to acknowledge that perhaps to some extent, but certainly not to the extent um, that men are putting pressure on themselves. Um, I I would venture uh, to say that in the vast majority of instances, a man worrying about how he's showing up Mm -hmm. and the angst and the hesitancy and the anticipatory anxiety is going to have a far more significant negative impact on the sexual experience Mm -hmm. than whether he is uh, three quarters of an inch below the average that's been determined by a clinical study. Got it. So even when men become aware that most of what they heard back in childhood and adolescence of all that talk about bravado and showmanship, you know, in the locker room and all that type of thing, um, you know, when men kind of realize that was kind of just nonsense back in the day and they're they're adults now but that kind of seed was always planted in their head and then that process of worrying can be tough to stop right don't we talk a lot about that in the article as well yeah it's it's a very um tough thing to shake uh the messaging that men seem to internalize in their primarily in their adolescence mm-hmm. seems seems to really kind of right? stick yeah. seems to really kind of stick and and a lot of that I think has to do with a compounding effect like you're describing which is um, when we talk about an average of 5.1 5.2 inches and not everybody hits puberty at exactly the same time but even if um, you are a let's say fully developed 15 or 16 year old yeah um, it is very unlikely that you have overheard peers talking about how they had um, average sex for an average length of time, uh, which oftentimes will include premature ejaculation in men's younger ages, Mm -hmm. and um, the average sized penis with an average reaction from a partner. Nobody talks like that. It's I was with her for... You know, X amount of time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, three hours. Um, She just 
wanted me to keep going for forever and it was the most amazing thing in the world. Well, when people overhear that and they don't have real good information, um, they begin to feel really insecure. They feel like there's something wrong with them. Yeah. There's no doubt that there are more men that believe they are below average than are below average. Gotcha. Um, I would say more than 50% of men worry about this mm-hmm. when they really shouldn't be. That makes a lot of sense. So let's talk some takeaways and pointers to help men dealing with this type of performance anxiety. Um, you know, how would you, you know, recommend that they move forward with getting over this penis size and, you know, how it can impact their sexual satisfaction? So, so Casey, before we come to that question, mm-hmm. I think it's also important that we do um, talk just a little bit about pornography. In oh, all sure. of this, because sure, sure. Um, I do think that the you know, pornography industry plays a role in all of this. Okay. Be- because beyond that locker room bravado, um, pornography you know, certainly does depict um, above average penises. And it makes mm-hmm. sense that they would, um, because it is a form of entertainment. It certainly is a form of sexual pleasure, but it's a form of entertainment. Um, I think a lot of um, men absorb messages from the pornography yeah, um, and from the way they see partners responding and the way that um, you know, larger erections and larger penises seem to be celebrated. And I think that that can really misconstrue um, oh. a lot of people's thinking. So I think it's important that we mention that. Yeah. It probably is a topic within itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think um, much like anything else in the entertainment industry, look, the reality of it is nobody would want to pay to go see a movie mm-hmm. about two hour, random two hour segment in your life or in my life or really in almost anybody's life. Yeah. It's not entertaining. Real life is not entertainment. A movie is a movie. It's meant to be fantastical. It's meant to capture your imagination. It's meant to kind of push the limits of Reality. what you know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and the same way all other forms of entertainment, whether it's professional sports, you're talking about top of the line athletes. Mm-hmm. So for somebody to say, well, you know, I'll never you know, be able to play in the NBA, so why would I pick up a basketball? Nobody's going to think that way. Um, so I think there's a lot more to talk about um, with, with the messaging mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, pornography. And I think the struggle that many men, particularly I think younger men now, have uh, between differentiating between entertainment mm-hmm. um, and reality. And, and I think they lose sight of what is um, average, um, what is necessary, what partners are looking for. So I think Got it's it. important that we mention that in this broader conversation, but I recognize it is a topic far beyond the scope of this episode. Got you. So again, let's talk takeaways and pointers to help men dealing with this type of performance anxiety. Where do they begin? Um, so I, I think it's twofold. Mm-hmm. One, I think it is um, recognition that um, in all likelihood, you are somewhere in that average range. Um, whether you are um, technically a little bit above the average of mm-hmm. that 5.1, 5.2, or a little bit below, um, the average range, I call it a range, is um, most of what uh, your partners have experienced, most of what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, I, I think recognizing that and understanding that um, there's nothing wrong with you in all likelihood um, and what you bring to the table is if you're in that range is likely like what your partner is going to be able to assess that you're somewhere in there. So I think that's, um, that's number one. Number two is that if you are in a relationship where if this is a, a predominant or pronounced fear for you, it's comfortable or it's safe to be able to ask, mm-hmm. to be able to check in about that. I think helping men get out of their heads with a partner's support can be a helpful step in the process. That being said, a lot of times that feedback from a partner doesn't quite land um, and men do stay stuck up inside of their heads um, around this topic. And I think they need good information and they need to really kind of start challenging some of these earlier messages that they've internalized. Got it. Did you have any closing thoughts on penis size and its impact on sexual relations? Um, I I think men will be better served um, focusing on what they um, can do as partners 
um, as opposed to their penis size, um, I would uh, venture to say that if you ask a partner of a man um, what is the most important thing to you or what are the top five, um, while um, penis size maybe makes number five, Mm -hmm. maybe in some instances, how you treat a partner, um, how you show up, how you tend to their needs, that these things matter a whole lot more yeah. than uh, what we're really measuring in fractions of an inch. It's totally. just not as significant as men think. Yeah, the last thing I'll add to it is I've found a way to be at peace with things that are just out of my control, no matter what it is, right? I mean, I think penis size, that's something you really don't control. So... You know, if you just adopt the mindset of anything in life, you know, you're just going to kind of be at peace with if you can't control it. I think that would be helpful maybe in this situation as well. Yeah. So so I would definitely agree with that. But I, w- I would definitely add um, that this is also not really a major issue for totally. the vast majority of men. It's On not something of that. Right. It's yeah. not something that really needs to be controlled and and the parts that you can control i think are the parts that tend to be a whole lot more impactful 